Hi guys, uh, this is Jonathan Lambert with Maths and Stats, uh, and in this video, uh, I suppose this video has probably been a long time coming, uh, another video in our series of videos dealing with hypothesis testing uh, is trying to attempt to, uh, let's say, demystify or unmuddy a question that I've sort of been asked many times, and that seems to be, it seems to be a question as well that seems to have mixed responses in relation to videos that I have seen uh, on YouTube. So maybe once and for all, what I'll do is I'll, I'm going to try to set out when should we use a Z statistic over a T statistic, or when should we use a T statistic uh, over a Z statistic, or what are the conditions under which, I suppose the real question is, what are the conditions under which uh, these particular statistics are appropriate? And what I've presented here is, it's usually the questions that I've sort of seen uh, on YouTube are typically, oh, I know my variance, my sample size is large, is it not a, is it not a, is it not a Z statistic? Uh, my, my population variance is unknown, my sample size is large, what should I use? And then we have arguments as well that have broke out. Uh, narrative arguments that have uh, that uh, have broke out in relation to when to use which. Uh, the reference that I want to provide is, I suppose, let's say a reference. It's introduction to mathematical statistics. So introduction to mathematical statistics, to mathematical statistics. It's an old text. This is, although there's more up-to-date versions, and it's by Craig. Craig. And <clears throat> it's by Craig and Hogg, right? Uh, I think the version I have is, uh, is one, of, it's one of the real early editions. I think it's actually the second edition of that particular text. Okay? So let's just get started, yeah? So we've got two constraints that we're going to put on the problem, yeah? Okay? The first one is in relation to the sample size, whether the sample size that has been drawn randomly from a population, it, it can be considered to be small or whether it can be considered to be large. Now, the question that we could have here is what do we mean by small and what do we mean by large? Uh, so typically, now it depends, yeah, or different texts have different, different interpretations of small and large, but typically if we say that N is greater than 30, we mean large. Uh, if N is less than or equal to 30, let's say, uh, less than or equal to 30, let's say we say small, or you can put the inequality uh, uh, either way, but in around 30, 30 and above is large, uh, below 30 is small, whichever way you want to consider that. So that's what we mean by small and large. Uh, and also another parameter that's important is whether the population variance with respect with respect to where the sample has been randomly drawn from, where the population variance can be assumed to be known or unknown. Okay? But one thing that we're going to assume across all these, effectively what we have is we have four possible cases okay but within them within each case is actually two possible cases that we sort of need to consider so i'm going to do the main four cases okay uh, with an extra assumption okay and the extra assumption is this is that the sample that has been randomly selected from the population that we know that that's after coming from a population that is normally distributed with a specific mean value and also a variance so let's say the first case that we're going to deal with is where the population variance is known, the sample size is small, but also what we also know is that the sample has been drawn from a population that's normal with a specific mean and with a specific, with a specific variance. And similarly, when the population is known and the sample can be considered to be large, we're going to assume that that's also has been drawn from a population that is normally distributed with a mean and a variance. Similarly, when the population variance is unknown, but the sample size can be considered to be small, we'll have a look at the case where, the, where we've got confidence <clears throat> that the sample has been drawn from a population that is also normally distributed. And then the fourth case is, once again, that this is also normally distributed, that the population that the, that the, that the, population that the, that the sample has been drawn from. Okay? So, just dealing with, let's say, one of our first cases, okay, let's say when the population variance is known uh, and the sample size is small, but where the, pop where the sample has been taken from a distribution that's normally distributed, okay, well, the test statistic, this, the test statistic in relation to this is actually, is actually an exact test statistic that's well-defined, and it's well-defined relative to the standard normal distribution. So the test statistic to use in this particular instance if the sample is small, 
Standard uh, the variance is known and it's come from a normally distributed uh, population. Well, then we're in the world of a Z test here and that there's no question about that. That is the case because that's the assumption associated with a Z statistic is that it's been drawn from a population that's normally distributed. If it's small, variance is known, it's a Z test. And similarly, if it's a large sample and the variance is known and it's come from a normal distribution, we also have a Z test. So irrespective of whether the sample is small or large, once we know the population variance, and also once we know that the samples have been drawn from populations that are normally distributed, the appropriate test to use is a Z test in either of those cases. Now, when it gets to the situation where the population variance is unknown, and it needs to be estimated using, let's say, the sample variance, and in particular, uh, the unbiased representation of the sample variance, uh, the appropriate test statistic to use in small sample cases, okay, being drawn from normally distributed populations, we're into a t-test, okay? So it's the t-distribution that we're going to use uh, in, that particular, in that particular case. And the t-distribution that's appropriate here is a t-distribution that has a certain degree, number of degrees of freedom, which will be relative to the samples that, sample, the sizes of the samples that, that we're considering. So it's a t-test. In the situation where the sample size is large, greater than or equal to 30, okay, uh, and the variance is unknown, we're also in the world of a t-test, okay? So there's no dispute in that particular fact. We're definitely in the world of a t-test. With that said, because the sample sizes are large, we can rely upon the central limit theorem, which tells us that as the sample